Does it feel like you don't have enough time for certifications on top of work, school, family, and whatever else you have going on in life? Well, in this video, we're gonna talk about strategies that you can use to help you prepare and pass your certifications. Make sure that after this video, you keep watching the rest of the series on how to pass cybersecurity certifications. But first, if this is the first time that we're meeting, welcome to my channel. My name is John Good, and here I get to spread my passion for cybersecurity training, tips and tricks, and career advice to help you go further. Remember to smash the thumbs up to like this video, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss future content, and make sure to leave a comment for the YouTube algorithm. Check out my website at johngood.com for more training without advertisements, resume reviews, career advice, and consulting services. Also, if you're trying to break into cybersecurity, check out my Getting Started page for free resources and a copy of my ebook on cybersecurity careers. All right, let's get into the video. You know, it'd be a lot easier if we had, say, 48 hours in a day instead of just 24. There's no question that studying for certifications can be extremely taxing, especially when some certifications require a lot of time and effort. Not to mention life happens and we all end up getting off our studying track and then we slip further and further every day that we don't study. Luckily, there's some different strategies that we can use in order to efficiently use our time. Keep in mind that there's certain strategies that might work for you better than others, and there's always new strategies that are worth a try that aren't in this video. All right, let's dive in. The first strategy that we're gonna talk about is the time of day that we study. Think about what your normal day consists of. Waking up, maybe eating breakfast, getting dressed, heading into work, coming home, eating dinner, and going to sleep. You might even have school or family needs that are mixed into your schedule. Now think about how you feel at certain times of the day. Do you wake up and feel relaxed and fresh and ready to focus? Maybe you feel better in the evening after you go for a run. This particular strategy depends on how your body functions. Personally, I have mixed feelings about different times of the day. In the morning when I wake up, my brain is fresh, but it actually takes me a while to get up and functioning and in the mood where I can focus. But if I study in the morning, then I feel better later when I'm tired or possibly less motivated. Additionally, if you study before everybody wakes up and when your phone and email start going off with alerts, it can be way better. If you've ever heard of Jocko Willink, who is a former Navy SEAL, he talks a lot about waking up before the enemy and that waking up early lifestyle. On the flip side, if I choose to study after work, I won't necessarily need that wake up period to start reading or doing a lab exercise. Whichever time of day that you choose, you need to consistently do that so you can build the habit and stay that way. Second strategy is related to the first and it involves blocking off your calendar. We actually schedule our study sessions and stick to them for implementing discipline in our lives. We give ourselves maybe an hour or two and focus purely on studying and eliminating distractions. When we don't schedule time and we decide to kind of ad hoc our studying times, we can run into a lot of issues as life events happen. Things like TV, YouTube, those can all be distractions and they can eat up our study time very quickly if we're not careful. To be completely honest, you should be using time blocking at work when possible too. I'm not necessarily saying block out time for studying at work, but it's an effective strategy to focus purely on the task at hand when you block out your calendar. To give you an idea of what calendar blocking or time blocking looks like, I went ahead and searched for it on Google and we'll open up some of these images so you can see. But basically this is your calendar and then you just make certain sections. So I'm gonna focus on chapter one in this section. I'm gonna do labs 10 through 20 in this section. Whatever the case may be, we're just creating blocks on your calendar that are not bookable by anybody else. The third and final strategy is the Pomodoro technique. Now, if you're not familiar with it, this is how it works. Number one, pick your task to complete, such as studying a chapter. Step two, set a Pomodoro timer. Typically, these are 25 minutes long, and we call these Pomodoros. Step three, work on that actual task. Step four, when the timer ends, you take a short break, maybe three to five minutes. Step five, after four Pomodoros, so four of those sessions, take a longer break, around 15 to 30 minutes. Just like the other strategies, we're focusing on building discipline and focusing on tasks. I know personally that shorter focus periods help to improve focus and decrease the impact of distractions. If you're interested in the Pomodoro technique, I advise you to go to your app store on your phone and there's a bunch of different timers and apps that you can get that will help you out and do the correct timing. Question of the day, which strategies from this video have you used? Are there any others that you've used that weren't in this video? Let me know down in the comment section below. In this video, we talk all about strategies that you can use to help you prepare and pass for certifications. Remember, be disciplined in your studying and you're almost guaranteed to be more successful than if you aren't disciplined at all. 
Make sure that you keep watching the rest of the series on how to pass cybersecurity certifications. As always, make sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Check out my website at johngood.com for more training, the advertisements, resume reviews, career advice, and consulting services. And I'll see you next time.